Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Ginger Show. I'm excited today to introduce you to Petra Clark. Hi, Petra. Hi. <laughs> welcome to the show. So today's show is going to be a little bit different. Um, we're going to be talking about surviving trauma, um, and Petra is going to be you know, shedding some experience and some hope for everyone that has um, survived trauma in the past. So I wanted to bring her on because I think this is a really important uh, subject. Um, you know, I have survived addiction, Petra survived trauma. So everyone I think has been through something. So I think this show can really benefit some people. So welcome to the show, Petra. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So I want to tell people a little bit about you. Um, so Petra is a business owner. Uh, she specializes in website design, development, graphic design. Uh, she is a, um, manager for me. So she manages the YML team. She is the social media team manager. So on any given day, she's managing approximately 15 to 20 people. And she also helps me with clients and projects. And she's just a, a real superstar um, on my team. So it's such a blessing to have her. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have her on today is because she is a trauma survivor. Uh, she is passionate about social connectedness, if I could say that. Okay. <laughs> and advocating to end the stigma on mental health. Um, she has been a national speaker for RAIN. Um, she is credentialed for victims of crime. She is a philanthropist. Uh, I know you've worked with the Cupcake Girls. Um, you've been on the Client Advisory Committee for Signs of Hope, and you are a volunteer for Foster Kinship. Yep. So, yes, yeah, so you are a busy lady. And so today the topic is um, going to be thriving after trauma and power of awareness. Um, so we're going to, to get right into it. And, you know, if you can... Uh, Petra, tell us a little bit about your journey of healing um, from trauma. Sure. So in 2010, I actually felt like a big shift emotionally um, that I couldn't shake. And I started to go to counseling and my therapist made the connection for me um, that my son was actually turning 10 years old. And that was actually the same age that I was when I was placed in foster care. And so even though, it, you know, obviously being placed in foster care for safety reasons, it was the best thing that could have happened to me uh, to get out of that abusive home that I was living in. It was still scary at that, you know, at that age. And so I'm still learning about my triggers, but my son turning 10 years old triggered my own trauma that I had buried uh, deep inside it came to the surface. And just like they say, if you don't deal with it, it, it will surface. Mm. And so I was in denial for, for years thinking that I could just make it go away. Like I had for many, you know, many years. And so fast forward to 2011, um, I actually met my husband and he was one of the most consistent people in my life, uh, until this day is, <laughs> and I felt safe and I never felt judged. Um, I always felt encouraged to do whatever I needed to do. And so that was, that was a big, big moment for me. And so the problem is I don't know what, I didn't know at the time what I needed. So the next several years, I was doing a lot of research online, just trying to find what I could find, I guess, for anything that would help me. And it was like a needle in a haystack. I had no idea what I was looking for, but I knew I was on a mission. And I was like, I have to figure this out because it's going to get worse. And so I was desperate to, to figure out what I could do to help myself. Got it. And is that a common, I would think it is a common theme, but you know, I know you worked with other trauma survivors. Is it a common theme that you kind of try to just forget about it and pretend it never happened? absolutely numbness we don't we, we don't even i mean it, it is what, what it is but you don't know it until right. you start doing some of the work and you're like oh that's what i've been doing this whole time so absolutely numbness yep. so what is the process to trauma recovery can you give us kind of a just an idea of what that looks like and how many years it takes or is it for life you know what they i my saying is i'm not healed i'm healing because it to me is is there's no on or off switch. You can't just turn it off and you're just healed. That's what I believe at this moment. It, it could change as I do more work, you know, I, but for me, it's, it, it is a long process. Um, in 2016, I was 
like I said, I was still, I was desperate. I was like losing hope. I decided since I had taught myself how to build websites um, that I would start a personal blog, which was unlockedpain.com. And that was just uh, a way of getting the feelings out because it was not comfortable to just come up to somebody, for even friends, and be like, hey, do you want to talk about you know the trauma that I went through? It just wasn't part of my vocabulary to be able to, to kind of express it. So I was drowning in shame, and that was my outlet. After a few years, I still felt stuck uh, because I was talking about the trauma, but on my blog, but I wasn't necessarily doing anything, but it was a stepping stone. So then I started to do a lot of research online uh, again, and eventually I actually found the Unique Foundation in Utah. Uh, they're now called Sucria, and it is actually a four-day retreat for adult survivors of child sexual abuse. Um, and it's free. It literally is free. You do not have to pay, you have to get there, but they take care of you the four days, they feed you, they have chefs, they just really, really care for you. They have educational programs while you're there, you get to meet other survivors. Uh, so going to the Haven Retreat, I actually learned so much in just those four days. I also met other survivors, like I said, and that just fueled my purpose to find my voice and to continue the healing journey and speaking out uh, to end basically the stigma on, on mental health and living with us. Uh, so the other biggest aha moment for me was um, pointing, was my doctor pointing out to me that I actually was struggling with seasonal affective disorder, which is a big thing. It's real. And I always knew that I struggled with the cold because I was living in the Midwest back then. And I was miserable all the time. And so I took the leap of faith and moved to beautiful Las Vegas, and it really helped me regulate my mental and emotional uh, struggles that I was dealing with. And so that was, yeah, that was part of my process. <laughs> so, uh, season, you know, seasonal disorder, we know it's real. So for somebody that's been through trauma or suffers from uh, mental health issues, and, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer that everybody's gonna suffer from a mental health crisis at one point in your life or not, you know, yeah. everyone's gonna suffer at some point. Yep. and uh, a mental health crisis. And so I think mental health is no different than physical health. We all suffer from it in different ways. Um, so seasonal disorder, you were able to figure out that that was one of the issues for you. And then um, obviously it sounds like you've been going to ongoing therapy over the years as well. Is that correct? Yep. Um, ongoing therapy. I've also even um, did group therapy here locally. That was also oh, really, really big help. Um, and, yeah. and trauma yeah. yoga, didn't you do some of that? Yes. Yep. Through uh, Yoga Haven here in Las Vegas, they actually have trauma-informed uh, yoga. So it's not just the typical, you know, go and stretch, which you do some of that, but it's connecting with your body. It's, it's a different, you know, it's different. It's, it's purposeful. And so that really, really has helped me a lot too. So, yeah. Very cool. Yep. And then you talk and mention um, to me on several occasions, um, the power of awareness. Um, so can you talk about how the power of awareness has helped you? Ooh, that one I'm still learning, but I understand it. And so the power of, of awareness is the most amazing gift that I have given myself. Uh, at the time, I didn't know what it was, but as I was doing the inner work and doing, you know, being self-aware by doing like the inner child healing that I've done, educating myself, uh, speaking, um, also speaking out uh, made me just so self-aware, I'm aware when my emotions actually start to shift. And instead of, you know, I'm able to process it, uh, the feelings and have less judgment on myself. That was a big one. That one took a lot of time because you judge yourself. You're like, here we go again, you know, and all these toxic, negative, you know, thoughts. So a lot of those days are actually easier and it's not perfect, but it's a process that I, I've worked on. I put together, you know, I put it into place that it works for me, you know, whatever it is, I, you know, that I have to do, whether it's taking a day off, a half a day off, you know, listening, I pl have playlists that I put together. Like I've done a lot of stuff that I, I, I turn to to help with that process of awareness. And when it doesn't work, I have other tools that I'm always adding, um, whether it's like speaking out. To me, that's a tool for me. It helps me release 
anything that's bottled up. So speaking out also helps, but I'm always looking to try different things because today this might work and tomorrow it may not. And then I have something else to try. So anything that's like healthy and like natural, I always am adding to my, my toolkit to see what I can do that to help others too. So, yeah. Got it. So, so getting in nature and doing things, you know, to um, self care, if you will, um, so my understanding of what you're saying about the power of awareness is that basically you're living in the moment. You try to stay in the moment so that you're actually able to really feel like, how am I emotionally feeling right now? Am I in a good place? Am I in a sad place? Am I in a negative space? Am I, be, you know, whatever that feeling is at the moment, you're just keeping constant awareness of that. And then if you see that there's something that needs to be addressed, you immediately address it instead of ignoring it and then just kind of moving on and suppressing that feeling. Is that yes. a good under, a good uh, understanding of what you're explaining? Yep, that and also be, here's another little, little aha that I've had. It's okay to have feelings. It's okay to be emotional. It's part of the human experience. So, you know, for me, I know it's easy for me now to say, stop fighting it. Because that's what I was doing. I was fighting it. I'm like, here we go again. I'm crying. I'm emotional. You know, I'm emotional today. And it's like, it's okay. It's okay to release that. Whatever it is, it's it's being released when you just cry it out or talk it out or dance it out, whatever it may be. Like, it's part of the human experience. So when you get to that point, you don't fight as much. You're just like, okay, it's just one of those days, you know. So absolutely. I remember my first year of sobriety and I would cry every day and it wasn't even like over anything big. It would be over like little silly things or, and so I asked my therapist, I'm like, I'm crying every day. And I was, I'm not a crier. You know, I was brought up by a military dad and, you know, very strict family and, you know, you know, you don't cry about things in my household, you know, unless you're actually physically hurt. Right. And you don't cry over emotional stuff. And so I was very uncomfortable with that. And so I went to my therapist and she's like, Oh yeah, that's totally normal. I was like, oh, really? Okay. She goes, keep crying. <laughs> keep crying. Yep. You'll be fine. And I was like, yep. okay. And then I had, like you said, I had to get comfortable with having feelings because I had always suppressed my feelings with drinking and drugging and whatever else it, um, I could find um, shopping or whatever, you know, to um, get rid of those feelings. So um, you're right about what you shared earlier that, you know, you can't avoid them. You know, you can't forget them. You can't avoid them. Um, and you really have to face them. And and sometimes it is painful, but, you know, I love uh, what Ga uh, Lady Gaga always says, which is it's okay to not be okay. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. So, so let's talk. So, you know, I know there's been a long road and a hard process for you and um, you had a very difficult childhood, but you're doing really great now. I mean, you have a successful business, you work with me, you're on, you know, you're doing speaking for, you know, at trauma events, you're doing philanthropy. So for people that have struggled or are struggling in their lives with the trauma or the pain from their childhood or even from their adulthood that makes them feel stuck, you know, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how you got from that point to now being successful and thriving in life? Um, I would say, and I said this, uh, I just said this recently, and I wanted to actually share this because I don't think... It was, I don't, I didn't think at the time it was possible. Um, so when trauma happens, your brain and your body disconnect. I actually have an old video that I had, you know, cause I used to do a little bit of like video and like recording myself, trying to explain what I was going through. And so I have a video where I had, I was trying to say like my brain and my body don't match. And I just didn't understand what that was. And so that's why a lot of times the brain is telling you logical, right? And your emotions are telling you the opposites. Um, so it's a hard, hard battle to deal with. Um, numbness and disconnection is what it is. Uh, so today sitting here, I can tell you that my brain and my body are actually starting to sink. So they don't fight as much. And so, you know, thriving after trauma for me looks like just being presence, presence and not trying to like, ignore it and hide it. And, you know, it just, it doesn't, that it doesn't work. <laughs> so you have to just be present, be aware, surround yourself with the com right community and the right people. It takes work. Just like anything in life takes work. You can't expect for people to just show up in your life and to be a support if you don't put yourself out there and do the work and just show, you know, show up genuinely. 
So thriving after after trauma is is my work, is my personal, it's my self care, it's my community, it's all of, literally it's everything combined, um, where I have to live that way so that it all aligns and it you know it helps me kind of stay balanced. Um, so I don't know if I will ever heal, um, but that's okay. You know I'm okay with being on a healing journey. It's almost like a like a like a gift forever. Like I'm always going to be on this healing journey. I'm always going to be finding myself different gifts and different nuggets that work for me, and learning from others, even survivors, and you know, people with education. So it's like a gift. In in a, I, I look at it as a gift. Even though the hard times were were lessons, now it's a gift. And so that means for the rest of my life, I know that I deserve it, and I just continue, you know, to kind of stay on that path. So. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Can you share just a touch on a touch on because and I and I know this happens in addiction and in trauma recovery where people are overwhelmed by the shame, by the depression, by the feelings, by all of this. And they're like, I can't work. I can't function. I can't. How how do they get past that? You know, I know for me in addiction, I can speak to it was going to group, going to AA, talking to other people that, you know, were also in recovery yeah. um, and thriving and, and working and being able to function and be successful in business really helped yeah. guide me. Um, but for you, for, for the person that's suffering from trauma and feels stuck, what advice would you give them? Um, I absolutely would say social connectedness is, is a big one for me. Um, really having, uh, you know, having friends, having acquaintances, you know, your work. Like for me, aligning my work with what I love, what I'm really true. I'm a very creative person. And it took a lot of uh, dealing with imposter syndrome and thinking I had to have an education. And so really just diving deep into understand that I'm a creative person and whatever that looks like for me, like aligning my work has been one of the biggest ones as well, because I was stuck in customer service. And I know I told you Ginger at the beginning, I'm like, I am so desperate to get out of it. And I jumped in two feet. I, I just took a chance on myself and it has been the most amazing journey, you know, to, to align my, my entire world, like around positive people, whether it's work, personal, and all, it, it's re, it's required for me because if I have my work not toxic and my household is healthy, I'm never going to have a good balance. So jumping in with two, like I said, I moved all the way from the Midwest to Las Vegas, taking a chance. I took the chance on starting the blog. I just, you know what, giving yourself a chance because a lot of times you want other people to give you a chance and that does come, you know, over time, but you have to give yourself a chance first. Ah. Um, and I feel like everything attracts after that because you, Ginger, were actually my, you gave me a chance and I just, you know, ran with it. And I, so, yeah. I remember you telling me when we met that, you know, you were self-trained in graphic design and web design and you were a little uncomfortable that you hadn't gone into formal, you know, college education training for that sort of stuff. And I remember telling you that you know, the people that in my experience in 10 years of working in this industry, the best people are self-trained. The best graphic designers that I've come across and website designers are self-trained. And sometimes the people that looked really good on paper uh, were not that great. And, you know, then you started working with me and, you know, I mean, that's why now you're managing the team because, you know, you're the best graphic designer we have on the team. You're an amazing website designer. And, um, and yeah, so, you know, I, I like that believing in yourself, giving yourself a chance, you know, and just like you said, finding a circle of people that support you and that love you and, a, you know, having that positive environment, whatever that means for you, yeah. you know, if you have to move, whatever, just basically what you're saying is just do whatever you have to do for yourself and give yourself a chance. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, absolutely. Give yourself a chance. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, um, I always like to um, kind of wrap up the show with some tips. So if you could give us some tips, if you would. So I always like a, to get a tip for, um, for life, work, and wellness. So if you could give us a little tip on life. 
Sure. So I would say for, for life is enjoy the journey because it truly, truly is a journey. Um, and learn to be still a lot. Uh, I still struggle with this one because my brain is, like I said, I'm creative. So I'm always like, oh, what can I do next? Um, but people who deal with trauma usually have a racing racing mind. And so ah. being still is, is really healing. Um, that means just going sitting in the park by yourself, get out of the house, whatever that may look like, be still. Great. I love that. Okay. You got one for work? I would say align your work and passion that fuels your purpose. So like I do graphic designs and it aligns with like working with nonprofits. That's like my pur- my person, purpose and passion. And so I would say align your, yeah, your work with your, with your purpose. And it's true. You'll never work a day in your life. If you, if you do that, you feel like, wow, I'm actually getting paid to do what I love. Like, you know, so yeah. I always tell people, you know, find something that you love and try to, you know, find work that aligns with that. Um, And then how about for wellness? Uh, For wellness, I would say prioritizing wellness allows us to lead a balanced life. So fulfilling lives and cultivating a positive impact on ourselves, but then also around people around us, because our energy is also very big and, and powerful. So having, you know, having a good balance so that when it's spread out to, you know, to other people, it really, um, it's a healthy balance. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today and share your experience. I know, uh, you know, cause I can speak to this from addiction. There's a lot of people out there suffering from trauma and I want you to know you are not alone. And I'm sure that Petra would um, second this motion that, you know, f- you could feel free to reach out to her. Um, so Petra, can you share with us the best way for people to follow you or reach out to you if they, you know, are on this journey and they need a little guiding light or some, you know, just someone to talk to? Sure. Um, on, I, might, I have a Unlock Pain on social media on Facebook. So you okay. just type in Unlock Pain. It's all one word. You can find my page there. And then my website, www.unlockpain.com. Um, I try to update it as much as I can to do different journeys. And every time, every time I'm doing something, um, I've shared some of my, you know, some of my, um, tri- I would say trigger warning for my website because I have shared some stuff on there that, could be, you know, a trigger for people. So just, you know, be aware of that before you start reading my story and stuff like that. Um, and then on Instagram, um, it's actually under my name. So it's Petra.Clark. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. And then, you know, maybe one day you'll, you'll, you'll write a book um, because, you know, this is the, the information that you're sharing and the fact that you are not living in shame, the facts that you are offering a voice, the fact that you are being outspoken is so important. Petra, you know what? We talk about this all the time. And that's why I talk about my addiction recovery all the time, because I want people to know they are not alone. And when you think of what an addict look like, this is what an addict looks like. So don't be so judgmental, you know, have some care and compassion um, because, you know, we do recover together. We do recover. And absolutely. And so I'm so grateful. Thank you for being on the show today and, um, you know, loved having you and, Again, if you uh, need any help, feel free to reach out to either one of us. And uh, we are here to help anyone that's been through addiction or trauma. Um, And with that, have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.